The Chevy Astro and GMC Safari platform share many of the same front end components as a half ton truck. Upper and lower control arms, steering knuckles, outer 33 spline DV shafts and hub bearings. Gives full size strength in a mid size package. The vans are suspended by torsion bars, although they are shorter than the full size trucks. After measuring several stock all wheel drive and two wheel drive vans, I'm going to call factory ride height at 17 and a quarter inches. It's taken from the bottom edge of the wheel well lip to the center line of the hub. This should be done on level ground and load it as you intend to use it. This gives accurate repeatable points that can be compared to any other Astro or Safari van as it's not influenced by tire size or air pressure differences, leaving only body lift to account for. Cycling the suspension from bump stop to bump stop, we have 8 and 3 eighths inch total travel. This is a very respectable number when comparing to Toyotas or Broncos, but let's see if all that travel is usable. Our total travel is divided between up travel and down travel, with about 55% of that being up travel and 45% down travel. Torsion lift is caused by increased preload, but doesn't change the range of motion, only the starting point within the range, trading ground clearance for down travel. It doesn't take long to run out of down travel, with only three and three quarters of an inch from factory ride height. Without enough available down travel, when the suspension compresses, it won't have enough travel to rebound, causing the tire to become airborne and lose traction. This is often felt as a harsh ride when hitting bumps, cresting hills, washboard roads, and easily lifting the tire on the smallest of obstacles. Topping the suspension out more often due to lack of down travel also greatly increases the stress on the upper ball joint as the lower control arm is loaded and is constantly trying to pull the joint apart. For these reasons, 3 inches of minimum down travel is highly recommended, which means we only have 3 quarters of an inch of lift available. Now that we know our suspension travel, let's look at our torsion bar spring rate and see how weight affects this. Some unknown values of the original torsion bar, we took some guesses and calculated out, bring us about 305 pounds an inch. Weight over distance gives us 344 pounds per inch. This rate is linear and will remain constant through the entire suspension range. Let's look at a few examples to see just how all this works. Start with the stock ride height for baseline, and we'll say that the van weighs 4,500 pounds. Using factory listed weight distribution percentages, we can find the front corner weight. Let's remove the rear weight for now and compare it to our wheel rate. See how our gross front vehicle weight rating and our total available travel matches, as well as the front corner weight matches our ride height, which is three and three quarter inches from maximum down travel. And our 4 and 5 8 inch up travel means that it will take 1,619 pounds to compress the bump stop. Now let's add 2 inches of torsion lift. This combination now requires an additional 700 pounds to compress the bump stop. Also note only 1 and 3 quarter inch down travel. With so much preload on the torsion bars, up travel will also be limited. As the van simply doesn't weigh enough to compress the bump stop. Later we'll look at several good reasons to limit up travel, but this combination will produce a rough, harsh ride and increased general wear. Let's look at our 2 inch lifted van but add 1500 pounds. This now puts us at the 6000 pound gross vehicle weight rating. Using our established wheel rate, we can simply look at the front corner weight difference to see what our new ride height will be. The added weight has reduced ride height by one and a quarter inches. So it has maintained a three quarter inch lift and also a more factory feeling ride at gross vehicle weight rating. Now let's look at these same numbers, but say that you start at factory ride height and add a lot of weight to the van. You're now at one and a quarter inches below factory ride height. All of these examples show how much effect weight has and that the purpose in the adjustment of the torsion bar is to adjust for load to maintain a certain ride height.
your torsion bars to this ride height is a good starting point. On farther, we can see just how much small increments make in ride handling and use them to our advantage. And why no one specific ride height is perfect for everyone. Since we have a linear wheel rate, it's easy to break this down to eighth inch increments. Think of the added preload as the spring's advantage over the fan's actual weight or its resistance to being compressed. At factory ride height, the spring and fan weight are equal and the front suspension will compress easily. But as preload is increased, the resistance goes up, now requiring much more weight to get the spring to start compressing. Jouncing should be done after making adjustments to the torsion bars and done with enough weight to sufficiently compress the suspension. At high preloads, this may require driving. You can use this chart for a general guide to adjusting for ride and handling. With preload and ride height being directly related, it's a balance of adjustment for the intended use, which may seem counterintuitive. Starting at our factory ride height of 17 and a quarter inches, we will compress the suspension to full bump stop. Notice that the rubber compresses easily and full bump stop is until metal to metal contact. One inch before reaching full bump stop, the control arm makes contact with the idler arm. Four and five eighth inch available up travel, and it's not all safely usable. Now let's repeat the process with our extended bump stop in place. Again, going to metal to metal contact. We now maintain a 3 8 inch clearance between the idler arm and control arm. Angles and thicknesses can vary depending on manufacturer. One modification that's seen is that people will cut those and use the top part as a spacer. In an effort to decrease tie rod angles, this can lead to serious breakage, now making it contact the control arm much sooner. This does reduce our once impressive travel of 8 and 3 8 of an inch to 6 and 7 8 of an inch, but it greatly reduced idler arm wear and having a few other advantages. Measuring ground clearance at the front cross member, you can see that in our case we have 10 and a half inches, but as the suspension compresses, we lose ground clearance. With the factory bump stop, we're down to only four and three quarters of an inch. Repeating the process with our extended bump stops, we now retain six and a quarter inches of minimum ground clearance, a one and a half inch improvement over the factory bump stops. On road or off road, it's hard to deny that a low center of gravity isn't beneficial. By limiting up travel, we can fit a larger tire at little to no lift. A 235-75-15 tire will fit with no lift at all, and up to a 29 and a half inch tire with only a half inch body lift. Clearing a larger tire at little to no lift has a few other advantages. Maintaining a smaller frontal area and tighter wheel well gaps is a long way in reducing drag and preserving fuel efficiency. All of our previous measurements have been made without a sway bar in place. The sway bar's efficiency will vary depending on several conditions. Hitting a speed bump straight on, it has little effect at all. Its effectiveness is also dependent upon traction. Tires unable to create grip can't put any leverage on the sway bar. And this is easily seen when playing in the snow, how the van remains very level and it just kind of skates across the surface. Versus when you have high traction, the sway bar can be very effective. Really, all we're doing is controlling how much weight transfer gets to the outside tire to prevent from overloading it and to get a desired steering response. While there are several options for the two-wheel drives, including heavy-duty version from the factory, but for all-wheel drives, we can use torsion preload to make fine adjustments. 
A rear sway bar can be very beneficial due to the live axle's naturally higher roll center without limiting travel. The compressive resistance of extended bump stops can also help improve handling. Wider tires or more backspaced rims will cause rubbing on the sway bar. The frame mount bushing occurs on a bend in the bar, which results in side-to-side -side loading of the bushing and shift of the sway bar itself. Broken and bent end links can be common. Some aftermarket companies will use a larger diameter bolt. This may further limit travel and increase stress on already weak parts. Let's watch Large Marge make his hill climb, both with and without a front sway bar. Four big things to take notice of here. Most notable is lifting of the front tire. We also lose traction when the rear tire gets overloaded. And just how stiff the whole band looks. There's another view of the same thing from the back. We break traction. So we still make it, but let's now look at it without the sway bar. And now, without the sway bar, you'll notice we don't lift the tire, we don't break traction, and our overall speed can be higher because it's just much more comfortable and less stiff feeling. Increased articulation and improved ride on rough terrain are the two big advantages, but highway handling and liability should always be considered first. By implementing these modifications, negative effects can be minimized. This connectable sway bar link may give you the best of both worlds. And the original end link can be taken out for testing easy Just enough. be sure that you and any other driver of the van is comfortable with how it handles. With our suspension at full down travel, we can see that the shock is our first limiting factor. Preventing full bump stop by about an eighth of an inch, which is equal to about three eighths of an inch tire travel. This is all actually designed quite well to serve two main purposes. When topping the suspension out, the shock helps to take some of the stress off the ball joint. It also acts as a limiting strap in case of the ball joint breaks. It keeps the CV shaft in a safe operating angle. To get full usable down travel with the factory ball joint location, a 16 and a half inch shock should be used. But some listed replacements are almost a full inch short, drastically limiting down travel and could result in easily blown shocks, especially at high torsion lifts. Off the shelf shocks will have a 40 to 60 to 60 to 40 valving ratio. While the exact specs can be hard or impossible to find for each shock, just remember that the more torsion lift for it's added, the farther we're getting away from that range, making even good quality shocks less effective. Keeping torsion lift under three quarters of an inch means that any competent alignment shop should be able to achieve a good alignment. And retaining a stock ball joint position will ensure that the CV shafts stay in a safe operating angle. Click all the buttons if you're enjoying this content and would like to see a part two with details on flipping the ball joint, re-index torsion keys, and more benefits to the extended bump stops. I hope that you find all this information useful and that it helps detail the benefits of our extended bump stops and helps show why our swashbuckler kits are only one and a quarter to two inches as traditional lifts will only decrease ground clearance further. And as you can see in all of these clips that lift is not a limiting factor. More lift would not be advantageous. And the higher center of gravity would simply make the van less stable on off-camber situations. And higher speed on-road handling. A general guideline for overlanding is to have 8.5 inches of ground clearance, which is achievable with just a half inch torsion lift and 29 inch tires. So if you're in the market for a lift, or maybe you already have a lift, or you don't want to run a lift and you just want to run a larger tire or improve on-road performance, feel free to contact us and we can discuss your personal needs. Be that just a set of our extended bump stops or perhaps a full swashbuckler kit. Thanks for watching and again be sure to hit that like and subscribe button for more content like this.